Welcome back. This is Jennifer Nassi. I am a holistic health coach with Learning Leaf LLC, and this is part two of a discussion on whole grains. In part one, we talked a bit about what is a whole grain, what is not a whole grain, and why whole grains are important, tips for how to digest them better and increase your energy. And in this section, we're going to get into some of the issues surrounding gluten, why it's become a bigger problem. Um, people are suffering from many more digestive ailments than they have in the past, and things that we can do, not only about that, but to reduce gluten intake, try different non-gluten grains, add variety to our diet, and we'll also talk a bit about some of the obstacles people have when trying to incorporate more whole grains, some solutions and suggestions I have for that, as well as discussing my own personal journey through autoimmune disease to health and wellness and how I support people on their journeys. So let's get started. How about gluten? Let's talk about that. It um, has become quite a buzzword of late, the notion of gluten sensitivities and the fact that more and more people are seeming to have an issue with this. And we talk about the epidemic of digestive disorders, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, colitis, diverticulitis. What is going on here? Well, one of the issues that has come to light and that is talked about a lot more frequently is the overuse of antibiotics. When we take antibiotics, the good bacteria is stripped from our system. Believe it or not, we have more bacteria in our system than we do cells, and they have an extremely important role. They not only help us with our digestion of food, they help us with our absorption of important minerals. And so when they get stripped away, it makes it so much more challenging for us. It also leaves a breeding ground for some of the bad bacteria that we don't want thriving in our system, such as overgrowth of yeast or candida. The other issue at play is the amount of processed and sugary foods that we consume. These sorts of foods feed the bad bacteria in our gut and people can develop what is considered leaky gut, where the walls of their intestinal system become permeable and things start to leach into their system. Toxins, things that are hard for our body to get rid of, and it starts a breeding ground for disease. So heartier grains, when we look at things like wheat and rye that have gluten, those have, gluten is a protein in those grains that is extremely hard to digest, and when our gut is already compromised, it becomes very, very challenging and people can develop gluten sensitivities. Traditionally, those kinds of grains were refined for a reason, but they were processed in a much, much different way than they are today. Traditionally, those grains would have been soaked and then sprouted before being refined into flours for bread. By doing that, it made them so much easier for our bodies to break down and digest. Today, we have genetically modified grains that are um, rampant in our food supply. Part of that, they have modified them to actually include more gluten. Why would they do that if it's such a hard protein to break down? Well, because gluten, that protein, is what makes our bread spongy and gooey and smushy and delicious. And so how can you have too much of a good thing, right? That's what we love about those kinds of products. Well, we're finding out that you can have too much of that. And especially since it is so prevalent in the wide range of processed foods we're eating, not only are we eating foods that contain more gluten than they have in the past, we are eating them far more often than we ever did before. And so between that and the use of antibiotics and the state of our digestive system, it has just created a breeding ground for disease. I encourage you, whether you are going completely gluten-free or are just looking to reduce gluten in your diet or wanting to try some new things, start switching out some of the most common gluten-free, gluten-containing foods that you use. One of the most popular I can think of is pasta. There are a wide variety of gluten-free pastas out there to try. Soba noodles are wonderful. They are made from buckwheat. Although it has wheat in the title, it is not related to wheat whatsoever. It is a fruit seed that is related to the rhubarb, and I think it is absolutely delicious. You can also find brown rice pastas, corn and quinoa pastas. If you go to your local health food store and ask, they will be able to direct you to a wide range of things that you can try. Likewise, there are plenty of 
gluten-free breads and other more processed foods that can replace some of the gluten-containing processed foods you're eating now. But as we know, this is a talk on whole grains, right? So I am especially here to encourage you to try and branch out to some of the non-gluten containing whole grains that there are out there. And once you do, I think you will find a whole new world of foods to try. Some of my favorites are millet. Believe it or not, it is not just for birds. It is a delicious whole grain, easy to cook. I love it in the morning. I will make scrambled eggs, spinach, onions, throw it on top of my millet, and I think it is a fantastic way to start my day. It has a kind of nutty flavor, almost a couscous-like consistency, and it is a lot of fun to play with. You can put it in soups, all sorts of things you can make with that. Obviously, brown rice, we've talked about that before. Quinoa is a wonderful grain, especially as we're getting into summer, it's hot. It makes a terrific cold salad. Cook it up, add in whatever vegetables you have. Cucumber, onion, um, parsley, other kinds of herbs, maybe some tomato. Let it you know, sit in the refrigerator for a couple hours so it's nice and cold and refreshing and have that on a hot summer day. Um, kasha, which is another style of buckwheat, it's called groats. Also similar in couscous, you can get it roasted or plain. Um, teff and amaranth, we love to have those as breakfast porridge. We'll cook it up, put on different kinds of nuts, fresh fruit, a little agave nectar or honey to sweeten it. You know, all of these grains are so easy to cook. Many of them take only 15 to 20 minutes, not very long at all. When you do it, yeah, like we've mentioned before, you're going to rinse them, you're going to soak them. Quinoa is one exception. It does not need soaking. However, you absolutely want to rinse it. It has something um, called saponin that is a natural herbicide on it. And if you don't rinse that off, it can leave a sort of bitter taste in your mouth when you eat it. So now oats, that is something people ask me a lot of questions about when it comes to gluten because they've heard it's a problem for people with, with gluten issues to take, eat oats. The thing with oats is the way they're processed. They tend to be grown in close proximity to wheat, transported in close proximity to wheat, processed in close proximity to wheat. They are one of the most contaminated grains. The good news is you can get designated gluten-free oats. They are grown on their own. They are transported and processed separately, so you don't have to worry about cross-contamination. So if you are following a strict gluten-free diet or, again, looking to reduce gluten in your diet, look for oats that are specifically labeled gluten-free. Some of the main complaints I hear when people start to incorporate more whole grains in their diet are, they're so boring. What I say to that is it would be also extremely boring if we only ate white rice all day, every day. You got to spice it up. Think about spices that you enjoy. Things like ginger, onion, garlic, make sauces, try gamasio. Gamasio is wonderful. It's a toasted sesame seed blend. You can get them with all sorts of different things. You can get a seaweed blend, which is excellent for getting trace minerals and iodine in your diet. You can get garlic blends. There's all sorts of kinds out there and they're fun to shake on almost everything. So there's a world of condiments out there to try. Figure out what suits your taste buds and make it yummy. Make it delicious because you're not going to want to eat it if it doesn't taste good to you. One of our favorites is making a peanut sauce for our stir fries. You know, there are a wide range of different options out there to experiment with. Have fun. One of the other complaints I hear the most is I don't have time. One of my suggestions is make a huge batch of once a week of whatever it is you want to try that week. I bought a rice cooker at Costco. It's enormous. It, I think, cost me under $30. It has a delay timer, so I can set it up the night before if I want to. Often in the evening, I will put our steel cut oats in there to cook overnight. So in the morning, our food's ready to go. We throw on our nuts, our toppings, whatever we want on there, and we get to eat and are on our way. You can also cook, you know, maybe on a Sunday, a big batch of brown rice, for example, and have it different ways throughout the week. Perhaps you start with a brown rice stir fry. And then the next day for lunch, you take that and you throw it in a wrap with some lettuce for your lunch. And then maybe the next day, it's brown rice on the side of some 
you know, sauteed greens or different kinds of vegetables. And then after that, uh, you know, if you're really needing to find something new to do with it, you can make a porridge in the morning and throw your nuts and, and some, you know, dried fruit and whatever in there, some sweetener, whatever in there that you want. And then when you're finally absolutely sick of it, you can make a brown rice pudding for dessert. You know, use some nutmeg, some cinnamon, coconut milk, um, dates or other kinds of dried fruit. So you can find all sorts of different ways to use it and it's ready to go for you because you've taken your time, you know, just to make one big batch and then it's there for you for the rest of the week. In just a minute, you can have, you know, a whole meal ready to go. When you go onto my website, learningleafcoaching.com, under the resources page, you will find one of my favorite recipes that honestly takes five minutes. It's a muesli recipe. You make it the night before. It has very few ingredients. You just need some rolled oats, some kind of milk, whether it's coconut milk, almond milk, dates, sunflower seeds, or some other kinds of seeds, whatever you wanna throw in there. And you just throw them in a bowl the night before, it soaks overnight, and you've got a delicious breakfast in the morning. So I encourage you, please, go to my website, check out the recipe, give it a try. There are lots of really easy, fast ways to get whole grains into your diet. And believe me, they can be really delicious too. So every week, I encourage you to try a new grain. Pick one you haven't tried before, whether it's millet, quinoa, teff, amaranth, uh, kasha, or buckwheat. There are so many out there. Google different recipes. Go to my website, learningleafcoaching.com, to find ideas. Um, you know, get talking to your friends. See what they do. Um, start kind of a club to try some new different things. And enjoy. Experiment. One thing to know though is no matter what, you are the one living in your body. And not all of these grains are gonna agree with you. So it's really important that you get inside your body and figure that out for yourself. And that is part of the experimenting process, okay? And then when you have, you know, you're out, you have this craving to have your white rice, whatever it is, go for it, thoroughly enjoy it. But my goal is to help you find ways to really boost your nutrition at home and therefore, ease your digestion, giving you more energy, and starting you on your path to health and happiness. In terms of my own experience, it has truly been revolutionary for me. A few years ago when my daughter was born, I was diagnosed with psoriasis, which is an autoimmune disease. I had all these horrible scaly patches of skin. I was embarrassed. They were cracking and bleeding. It was uncomfortable. You know, I used to joke growing up that I had no immune system to speak of. I used to say, you know, that I was absent the day God handed them out. For the most part, my friends and family agreed. I was plagued with chronic sinus infections, chronic bronchitis, um, strep throat, you name it. It just seemed like I was always worn down and unable to stay healthy. Because of that, I had round after round of antibiotics. I was not in a good place, and I believe that led to the manifestation of this um, psoriasis, this autoimmune disease coming up for me. Lo and behold, you know, I was told that there's no cure, there's nothing you can do, diet's not related, and I just, that didn't resonate with me. So I sought out all the information and support I could. I thoroughly changed my diet. I discovered I had a gluten intolerance, and believe it or not, over time, I became the healthiest and happiest I have been since I can remember. And I am now so honored in my role as a health coach to be able to support people on their own journeys. So please, I welcome you to visit my website, see if there is a way that I can support you on your journey, sign up for my newsletter, it's free, get fun tips, recipes, things to help you, Check out the resources section for recipes and other ideas, and I hope to see you back here again soon. It has been such a pleasure. Thank you for joining me, and take care.